non Tombe Kodlamini from Swaziland is living with HIV. She knew her status close to 10 years ago, but it has not been an easy road. From a tumultuous marriage to torment by health workers for conceiving a child whilst HIV positive. I had disappointed him enough. And then he just said, you know what, I can see you have clearly failed your sexual life. The only thing that he said was, I can rescue you for this last, lifetime, last time by ensuring that you never go through this again. I will cut your troops. Nontom Beko says her doctor coerced her into sterilization. She now cannot bear children despite her youthful age. Constantly am trying to move forward and accept, but I must really say it is very difficult uh, due to the fact that I still can't stand seeing an infant. I still hear cries at night. It's still terrible. I still can't walk by a kid's section. I still can't get myself to go to a baby shower and feel good about it. United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pili, addressing a UN Human Rights Council panel, said HIV has taught us a lot about how the neglect of human rights increases vulnerability. The lack of respect for human rights has not only fueled the epidemic, it has brought to the surface pernicious and persistent forms of discrimination and marginalization in multiple and overlapping manifestations. We must therefore be ready to address a range of violations and abuses, including inequality and violence against women, which drives HIV vulnerability among women and girls. Last year, the Joint United Nations Programme on HIV-AIDS, UNAIDS, reported that HIV, infections and AIDS-related deaths have fallen to the lowest levels since the peak of the epidemic. But despite the progress, those living with HIV continue to face discrimination. 37-year-old Nick Rhodes has been living with HIV since 1998. He notes that there have been some breakthrough in terms of access to medicine, but emphasizes stigma still remains a threat to the spread of the epidemic. Medicines have advanced, you know, so far since the beginning of the epidemic, uh, but these laws have not, you know, evolved, you know, with the change in medicine and the change in the times. And the stigma gets thicker and thicker, um, which, as we've come to find out, more and more information is coming in, that, you know, the stigma is not just harmful to, you know, people uh, living with H, you know, living with HIV AIDS, but we're finding that it keeps people from sometimes getting tested. UNAIDS Deputy Executive Director Paul DeLay says many of those living with the disease face lifelong traumatizing human rights violations. In many places, young people continue to have the highest infection rates and are denied the information, education, and services they need to avoid HIV. Sex workers, people who use drugs, men who have sex with men are criminalized and stigmatized. 47 countries continue to impose discriminatory restrictions on entry, stay, and residence based on HIV status. Pile cautioned against the dwindling financial support in the global effort to combat the disease, noting it was a threat to the attainment of the right to life for those living with HIV. It was noted that there have been some milestones made in addressing the epidemic, with the number of HIV-related deaths dropping globally. According to UNAIDS, about 15 million people living with HIV are now accessing medicine. However, stigma and discrimination hinder the advances in fighting HIV and AIDS. Bians Gawana, a commissioner of social affairs in the African Union, reiterated the theme of the panel that persons with HIV should be given a voice and treated humanely. If I want to be treated uh, um, as a human being, despite my status, it's important that without knowing my status or knowing my status, that I treat somebody else human. And that is what human rights are. They are not abstract rights. They are rights that distinguish me from an animal.